It's a hot day here in the galley, but you know what? I love it, and I'm excited because we are at a very special place right now. We are in the place that many call the town of Jesus. Not Nazareth, where we just were and where he was raised, but Capernaum. Tell us why this place is so important, and tell us where we are right now. Well, Capernaum is the, the anchor of Jesus' activity here around the Sea of Galilee. You are now standing in front of a monumental doorway. Look wow. at the carvings. Now that is an part. arch. Okay, and wait till you see the interior. Look at this. This, in fact, is the biggest synagogue from antiquity ever found in the Holy Land. It was two stories high. It could accommodate hundreds of people inside. Hundreds. And this is really spectacular, especially when you think that this is the Galilee. This is not a yeah. very big metropolitan environment. It's not like it was Jerusalem or, or in Judea. Uh, this is Galilee, kind of off the beaten path, you would say. Yes, and, uh, and it's really surprising to have such a big synagogue. You said that this was the largest synagogue in all of Israel. That's stunning. As far as we know. Maybe there's wow. even a bigger one hiding somewhere, but we found over a hundred ancient synagogues. This is the most grand one. Wow. And especially coming from this rather not very densely populated part of the land, yeah. it's kind of surprising. That's true. Beautiful structure, by the way. As you said, two stories high. You can fit hundreds of people in here yeah. uh, in its day. Look at these pillars and pretty yeah. well preserved. These are Corinthian pillars. The stone itself is white limestone, which is okay. not natural to this area. They were bought from a quarry, which is at least 10 miles away. Wow. This was a big investment. Big investment, big operation. And this synagogue dates to? Ah, here is the problem. It actually doesn't date to the first century. It's old, but after digging and providing also dating material, yeah. the agreement among all scholars that it dates to a later period, to the fourth, fifth, or sixth century, not the time of Jesus. But they call this place the synagogue of Jesus. Well, how does yes. that work? Yes, but not this building. This building labeled as the White Synagogue dates to the yeah. Byzantine period. And when they realize it's from a later time, the Franciscans were in charge of this whole property. They started tearing the floor. Ah. They made 24 strips across this building. Now cement is covering it in most cases. This is still original stone tiling. Okay. But in those parts, in some places, they did find what they were looking for, the first century. They did. So they They're, found the remains of that first century synagogue underneath this synagogue. Yes. There is another building buried beneath this one, rectangular as well, a bit of a smaller scale, and it dates to the first century. Unfortunately, they did uh, put the, the cement to cover all the remains, uh -huh. except for one place, this corner. Can Let me show, show you. Let's do it. On this corner, you can see two very clear features. One, the stone is different. It's it not is. that imported white limestone, yeah. but the local black basil stone, right. which is also not shaped in any special way. It's just the local stones put together, but they clearly form a building. This is its corner. And look, you see the doorway over here? Yeah. Eric, you cannot rule out the possibility that Jesus himself walked through this very doorway when he attended services in the synagogue beneath the white building here. Whew. I have to take a deep breath, Danny, as you share that and really try to process that. As a follower of Jesus, the very real possibility, probability perhaps, that Jesus walked through this doorway where, you're, where we are standing right now, that's tough, to even, tough even for me to comprehend. Yes. Amazing that we're standing here right now. For a believer, this is really mind-boggling. It is. And it's one of two buildings that with a great sense of certainty, we can associate to Jesus. Another in building Here in Capernaum. The other building in this site is identified already in ancient time as a site where Jesus healed a person, the mother-in-law of Peter. The Gospel of Mark tells us that it was near the synagogue because they went out of the synagogue and immediately entered that house. So it must be right across the way. Exactly, and they've dug all around the synagogue, but behind the entrance here, they found a building with odd features that lead us to believe that's the spot. Can you take us there? Let me show you. Let's go. Danny, I would be remiss to not mention the synagogue we're just leaving is a place where Jesus also very likely taught, first of all. Second of all, cast out demons from a demon-possessed man. This place is kind of a big deal in the history of Jesus' ministry. 
Yes, the Gospel of Mark records an event of a man approaching him, shouting at him, and Jesus responds by casting the demon out. Yes. That happened also in the synagogue of Capernaum. That's just the tip of the iceberg though, right? With the miracles of Jesus in this town, we had Jairus, a leader of a synagogue here in the Galilee. He came to Jesus with an urgent plea. What did he ask him to do? His daughter was sick and Jesus healed her. Again, another miracle that he performs here. He heals the servant of a centurion, yes, which right. is interesting by itself, indicating there was also some Roman presence here. Danny, one of the things I love about the, the healing of Jairus' daughter, number one, she was 12 years old. I have an 11 year old daughter, so I can relate. Number two, she rose from the dead. She was in a deep sleep, she was dead. All of a sudden, she was awake. We have something kind of similar here in Capernaum, right, with Peter's mother-in-law, not dead, but in dire straits. Yes, and here archaeology has a saying on that story. The Gospel of Mark tells us that they went out of the synagogue and immediately entered the house of the mother-in-law of Peter, but she was sick. Jesus performs a miracle, she's instantly healed, and then she serves him. She had a fever, she was down for the count. I mean, when you have a bad fever, hey, you can be down for the count for several days. It takes a while. It takes a while. In the case of Jesus, it happened instantly. She is cured and she serves him. Archaeologically, the question is, where could that have happened? And archaeology has found a candidate right next to the synagogue. Oh, yeah. Stone's throw. There is a building over here with a very specific layering of it, stratigraphy, as we call it. Okay. At the lowest level, you have a first century structure. Right. But 300 years later, that building is divided by a wall. This is repositioning re that wall. Right. Uh, and another hundred years later, an octagonal building, you can see it very clearly, an octagonal building yeah. is built over it. Yeah, we see a church was actually built over this structure. Yeah. In the, in the 1980s, uh, yeah. a modern Catholic church was built over it, which yeah. to me looks more like a spaceship yeah. <laughs> hovering above all of those remains. But, but hey, at least, at least you can see the remains. And this is most likely, according to many, the, the place where Peter may have lived. Peter may have lived right here, the Apostle Peter, and the healing of his mother-in-law went down right here where we're standing right now. Indeed, and uh, originally the church was covered with mosaic floors. Mm -hmm. The one in the middle had an interesting design of a peacock. There's a replica of it presented right yeah. next to the entrance. And all of this is associated with one of the most famous miracles, healing miracles of Jesus. Yeah, and, and the Bible says that here in Capernaum, again, the town of Jesus, Danny, so central to Jesus' ministry, uh, he cast out many demons, many people who were sick, he healed here. I think of the great story of the paralyzed man being lowered through the roof by his friends, through the crowd, so Jesus could heal them. All of them, this is, this is a roadmap of the miraculous ministry of Jesus uh, here in Capernaum. You love it up here in Galilee, man. You were dying to bring me up here for a while. You said, let's get up to Galilee. Definitely. So, I'm so happy we finally made yeah. it. Nazareth, Cana, Capernaum, every Christian pilgrims that comes to the Holy Land should also be this part of, of the land. Here. And, and the, the beauty, the landscape, the archaeology, the history, exciting stuff for you too. Golan Heights is here in the back, That's the right. upper Galilee. Okay, this is a beautiful piece of land. Uh, as well as very, very significant. Yeah. Danny, thank you so much, my friend. Watchman contributor, Danny the Digger Herman. We couldn't do Galilee with anyone else but you. My, my pleasure as it usual. Was great. It was awesome. And we'll do it again soon here in the land, my friend Danny. Up next, my final thoughts from here in Galilee, the center of Jesus' ministry. That's after the break. It's the Watchman. It's Christians United for Israel, only right here on TBN from the town of Jesus, Capernaum. Don't move.